Hello friends, welcome to this episode of Blossoms and Bourbon. Uh, did you notice anything different about the backdrop here? Um, so when we first started these videos, um, I reached out to you guys and said, let me know if there's something that you might like for us to do, that you might like to see as a part of the series. And one of my friends reached out to me and said, you know, I think it might be kind of fun for you to do uh, your take on a birthday party, a kid's birthday party. And we're in the middle of summer here, so I thought, okay, that could be really fun. Let's do a beach birthday party for a kid. So tonight's episode is entirely devoted to that, um, as well as to a bourbon tasting in just a few minutes. Um, and so let's talk about the decor for just a second. Super inexpensive, just swim rings um, that I inflated, hung from the ceiling, some party lights, just that kind of stuff to create a festive atmosphere. First of all, that's, that's really important. Secondly, this little thing, which is really a lot of fun, um, this is just a plastic tray that I use some Quickcrete cement to set up with. And inside these swim noodles is just some pieces of rebar for stability. The thing that's important about the Quickcrete is it's gonna give it nice weight. So if you really are having this party outside, you're not gonna have to worry too much about things, you know, kind of blowing away. Um, I'm gonna sit this down here for just a quick sec and then show you what we're gonna do with this. Just to kind of create some fun with it. Um, I love paper parasols. I think they're just so much fun. They're bright colored. So we're gonna use a couple of those. And they will slip. Did I cut the camera off up there for a second? They're gonna slip right in here. There we go. Let's put this one down here. And again, this is a piece that would just kind of be great on a food table. If you're setting up a food table for kids, it could just serve as a decor element uh, for the overall look of the party. And then because we want this to have the sense of being real, um, I prepped this guy. I took this little device, which is called a bouquet holder that back in the day, we used to make wedding bouquets in it. Um, it's Oasis foam. I just used it with some leaves and put the leaves in there. So we literally will create like a palm tree effect up top. Okay, and I'll move that back over here so we can see that. So fun, you know, obviously with some size to it. So it has some impact visually too, which is kind of important uh, when you're planning a party. Let's do a couple of really easy florals. Um, this first one, if you recognize the container at the bottom, it's actually one of those little moles that you build a sandcastle with. Just turned it upside down, put some oasis in it, again for weight, which is kind of important. This little guy, of course it's a flower, and came from the Dollar Tree. Um, it is really cool because if you're outside, this will spin in the breeze. I added some fresh foliage to it. I added this really cool piece of dill, which I think is really fun for a very easy, very simple. Uh, the dill came from my yard, so it's practically no cost kind of centerpiece. Um, what child's party is not complete without a tiki drink, right? <laughs> so I did want to point out that if you want to tweak this, you can use, you know, kind of a sippy cup option instead of the tiki drink, but I think that's a really cool glass. So what we're going to do with that is just take some standard carnations. And we're just going to make some kind of a low tight, rounded arrangement of the carnations. These have just come in, so I'm reflexing them a little bit by pushing on these green petals underneath the stem to kind of release the petals of the bloom open just a bit. It kind of helps them fill out a little bit. And so basically we're just gonna kind of fill this up And don't forget to pull those leaves off if they're gonna be in the water. Laura was working today and we actually do an arrangement like this here in an ice cream sundae container so that you could actually call our shop and order the ice cream sundae arrangement. Um, and for that, 
we have a cherry that goes on top. So I had to ask Laura where the cherries were because I couldn't remember. So I'm just going to use this faux cherry, a little piece of um, sticky dot from Oasis, and then another little sticky dot on a straw. And that's going to get tucked in back here. And there we have another really simple but kind of fun floral arrangement for the party. And probably the most involved floral that we're going to do is going to be in a sand bucket. Because, you know, why not, right? Um, we've talked a lot, you know, in almost every episode about mechanics. Because the mechanics are kind of the foundation, the basis of any flower arrangement. And so, as I was considering this, it's like, you know, I don't want to fill this whole thing with foam. Uh, super heavy, not as environmentally friendly. Uh, the foam, because it's dark, has a tendency to discolor the pretty pink of the sand bucket. So, is there a way that we could do some other mechanic that might work without foam? So, this is one of those little sand sifters that you would use on the beach when you're looking for shells. And basically what I did is I took my clippers and I clipped out the openings inside the sand sifter. So this is now going to serve as an armature for the flower arrangement. I'm just going to pop the little handles off the sand bucket. I put some of our friend the colored wire from Smithers Oasis on the sifter. And I'm just gonna tie it around those little knobs that hold the handles on. And then it's gonna be nice and secure in there to hold flowers. Um, and it's gonna be just a basic kind of simple arrangement. There we have the handle back in place. Let's get rid of a little bit of that extra wire. All right, so let's start out with some of this beautiful eucalyptus. Um, this eucalyptus is actually locally grown. Uh, I'm so excited to be able to have suppliers locally um, who can provide beautiful fresh product to us. It's so nice to be able to have access to that. So we're just gonna kind of drop some in there loosely that too is going to serve as kind of part of the mechanic for the flowers once the flowers go in. And my hands are going to smell great when this is over because, you know, that's what eucalyptus does. Now, in order to get kind of enough of a grid in this, because it's a fairly large opening on the, the sand bucket, so in order to get, it's going to take a fair amount of the greenery to kind of really be to the point where we would want to uh, have enough to hold the flowers in place. You'll see that I am giving this two snips. I'm trying to divide each stem up into a couple of stems just to make it go a little bit further. And I'm sure that the farmer that supplies us this would be okay if I called and said, I need more. This would be very easy to do with um, you know, anything that you have growing in your yard, if you have um, camellia foliage, um, really, uh, Jacob's Ladder, I have some of that growing in my yard right now, that would work great for this. Um, I don't know if you may have eucalyptus growing in your yards, but this again is a local product, so you may have some. It's especially appropriate that we're doing beach because Jason and his family just got back from the beach. My family is going to the beach. It's that time of year. All right, so if you're checking out the camera above me, you can see that that's a nice kind of full um, grouping of the eucalyptus. I think we're about at the point where I'm ready to do some flowers. And because it's summer, got to have sunflowers, right? And these sunflowers are also from the same local supplier. 
Sarah's Petals out in Fincastle, Virginia. Thank you, Sarah. They're beautiful. And again, for a kid's party, this doesn't have to be um, anything, really. It just has to be fun. It has to be pleasing to you, pleasing to the people that are around you. Uh, we were losing some of the petals on this. So you remember this technique, how you take the petals away and you get that lovely sort of little pad in there. So just do something that's fun to you and fun to other people. They will appreciate it. You will certainly appreciate it. And it's going to add a nice spot of color to your party. I love using carnations for things like this because they're so sturdy. They're also so inexpensive. So it's a nice option if you don't want to spend a ton of money on specialty flowers. Choose some flowers like carnations. They come in amazing bright colors. Work great for, for what you're doing. So did you see that? I was just checking the link on that because there's a little bit of a misperception about how long I need it to get down into the bottom of the bucket. We've talked about that, I think, once before with cubes especially, or really any vase, uh, is to make sure that you're leaving enough stem length on there so that your flowers are down in the water sufficiently. Um, I personally am not concerned about the fact that I can see that bright blue right there. Partly because there are so many colors in this party that that seems just like another element of it. Um, in some instances in floral design, we get kind of obsessed about covering the mechanics and you know covering the parts of the design that we think people may not want to see. Um, so I just wanted to point that out. I'm not I'm not worried about that at all. That blue peeking out there it doesn't bother me. Hope it doesn't bother you. All right, last thing for this arrangement is gonna be some more of that dill, partly just because I kind of am obsessed about it. Here's the funny thing. I don't like dill. I don't like dill pickles. I don't like things with a heavy dill flavor, but as a flower, I think this is so much fun. It looks like fireworks to me. You know, just those little tendrils that shoot out. I think that's just super cool. And that's kind of the feeling I want this to have, is that it's just like fireworks that kind of come up above the arrangement. All right. I think we're about there. So let's just set the table quickly for this party. And kind of get it ready. Oops, saw something I forgot. These guys, these came with the sand bucket, right? So basically I just glued some sticks onto the back of the little shovels, and then those are just gonna pop into the arrangement like that for another sort of textural element that kind of ties in the theme. All right. One thing that I have done before and that I really like doing is with setting tables, I like using different things for tableware. Um, I've used dish towels as placemats before. So I thought, okay, so why don't we use a beach towel as kind of the tablecloth for this party? Um, I think that would be all right. The beauty of that is just like the, the dishcloths, they go right in the washing machine. So if you have somebody that spills something on it, um, it's very, they're very easy to clean and launder. Then you just pack them right back in your bag and take them to the pool. If you have extra things that can add color and fun like this runner, um, that is something that I love to do is mix colors and patterns, especially when you're doing things for kids. So we've got some turquoise, we've got some orange. Now I've got a fun little arrangement here. We've got our tiki drink here. And 
We've been throwing a cup for the kids. And really, lots and lots of opportunities for paper goods for a party like this. Um, some plastic wear that you could reuse if you choose. But for a kid's party, you may want to just get some paper goods and a fun kind of graphic design that blends with all these colors and uh, pull that in and use that for the party. It could be great fun. So uh, Sherry, I hope that if you're watching, you enjoyed this. Uh, Sherry is the one who requested that we do a kid's party theme. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. So as is probably appropriate for the adults who have lived through a kid's party, it's now time to taste bourbon. <laughs> The bourbon of choice for today is Pinhook. And this Pinhook is actually called High Proof. Um, the really interesting thing about this company, once I started to do some research on them, um, they're distilled, uh, or it is distilled by Castle and Key in Frankfort, Kentucky. And, you know, when I first saw this, I said, wow, that's interesting because this looks like a wine bottle. And then I started to do a little more research on the company and I found out that this, for instance, is called Bourbon Heist and it is actually bottled and labeled for 2021. So what this company does is as they make their bourbons, they have a rye, they have a wheat, they have this high proof, which this is actually 119 proof. Um, and they blend the barrels um, every year into what they feel like is the best combination of flavors for each of those types every year. So they don't try to match the flavors from last year. They instead try to come up with the best flavors that they can have for this year. I like that. So it is really sort of like the vintage of a wine almost. And I think that's a pretty cool concept in bourbon world. So uh, this one is the high proof. Uh, the reason it's called Bourbon Heist is because every year with their new releases, they bear the name of an actual real life thoroughbred horse. So the horse that this bottle is named after was named Bourbon Heist. Um, and if you go online, you can do the research on the horse. And I think he's won about $80,000 in purses or something to that effect. So um, anyway, kind of a fun backstory to, to what this company does. Now, because this is high proof, I'm definitely gonna invoke that rule that we talked about where we just have a taste just to get your mouth adjusted to the fact that there's gonna be alcohol, okay? So bear with me for just a second. Yeah, and definitely, wow. As I put, <laughs> I said, Jason, you're not gonna like this because <laughs> Jason doesn't like really hot uh, bourbons, but um, even as you put your nose in the glass, you can definitely get the alcohol coming off of it. All right, so let's, let's nose it now. Nice color, by the way, in the bottle. This does have rye in it, so the rye is gonna make it spicier by nature. Um, there's not a wheat component to this one, like in some of their other bottles. So there is an essence of fruit, sort of like you know, peach or something, definitely cinnamon. That's, and I don't know about you, but cinnamon seems to be one of those notes that comes through, uh, particularly for bourbons that are, have a little more heat to them. All right, let's do a taste now. The real taste. There's a sweet element um definitely sweet that's interesting so it's sort of like brown sugar a little caramelly like it's interesting because in spite of the fact that this is 119 proof it's not unbearable and it still remains sweet so it's not just hot um this one definitely rests at the back of my throat and I don't know if you've noticed that about me, but most of the things that I taste that seem to be on the hotter side do kind of rest at the back of my throat in, as compared to like mid-tongue. So yeah, this is a good one. So Pinhook from Frankfort, Kentucky, Castle and Key Distillery, 
Great backstory to the horses, um, which is so much fun when you're in Kentucky anyway. Um, I've not had the privilege of visiting this distillery, but um, look forward to perhaps doing that on a future visit. I hope that you've had fun with this episode. Think summer, think fun, think just enjoy having flowers and bourbon in your life. Um, and I hope until next time then, cheers to you and to flowers every day. Thanks so much for joining us.